Hi, and welcome to the Skype for Business Learning the Basics class. My name is Sarah Rice, and I'll be guiding you through today's session. The goals of our session today are really kind of simple. We want to introduce you to the basic activities you'll need to start using Skype for Business today. Think of these activities as the building blocks you're going to need in order to start to master Skype for Business. At the end of today's session, I'll also point out some key user resources you can take advantage of as you are working through becoming a Skype for Business user and help you along your journey. I think the best place for us to start today is just to take a moment to define or describe what Skype for Business really is and, and how it can fit into your work life. Skype for Business is a single application that arms you with all the tools you're going to need to communicate effectively. Skype for Business can be your audio conferencing bridge, an instant messaging tool, a web conferencing solution, or maybe even your phone, allowing you to connect with peers, customers, partners, vendors, using your computer and an internet connection. The other thing about Skype for Business is that using our powerful encryption and authentication helps to keep your communications safe. In the end, what you have is this enterprise-grade unified communications tool all wrapped up in the Skype look and feel that folks know and love. Before I dive into more detail today, I'm just going to give you a sneak peek into some of my favorite features. One of the first things you're going to notice with the Skype for Business client today is that it's very Skype inspired. So if you're a Skype consumer user, you'll probably see some familiar things. We'll definitely spend some time today getting acquainted with the client. I'll also review the always on top call monitor, a perennial favorite for the multitasker in us. Finally, everyone's favorite, the new and improved animated emoticons which let you add some personality to your IMs. So with that quick introduction, let's take a moment to move into demo mode. I know for myself, I'm a really visual learner, so I need to see what's happening in order to truly understand it. So let me switch over and share my desktop. Okay, so here we are with the new Skype for Business client. The first thing you'll notice is that Skype inspired client I referred to earlier with the round photos and the icons and that presence indicator. Again, if you're a Skype consumer user, this probably will be pretty familiar to you. I think the best place for us to start today is for me to step through a tour of the main client. So let's start with the top left corner here. Think of this as the me section where you can tell folks what's happening and what you're up to. Right away, you can see my photo and my presence as indicated by that little green available icon. The presence is something that's informed by my Outlook calendar. So based on what I have going on during the day, it's going to change to tell folks when I'm in a meeting or maybe when I'm free. If for some reason I want to manually set my presence, I can do that right here. So maybe I'm doing something super important and I don't want to be disturbed. So I set myself to do not disturb. And when I'm done, I can reset my presence again. Another thing I can do from this view is update my status. So I can kind of broadcast to folks what I'm up to if I want. So for instance, I, I can say, you know, I'm doing a training today. And because of that tight integration with Outlook, if you're on holiday and you have an out of office message set in Outlook, Skype for Business is smart enough to pick that message up and display it here uh, in your updates as well. So pretty cool. Underneath this main me section, there are several different tabs. Let's walk through these. The first one is this contacts tab. So you can see your list of contacts. From here, you can search for somebody and bring them to the top of the list. If there was a group of people I talked to a lot, I could group those users together and that would allow me to send a group I am or even schedule a meeting with that specific group of individuals very, very simply with a click. Let's me be super efficient. Next up on our tour is the conversation history tab. If this has been enabled by your organization, it's where you could see a list of all your past conversations and meetings 
I love this feature. Uh, you know, it seems I have trouble remembering what I did you know, five days ago, let alone five minutes ago. So for me, this is really helpful in being able to keep track of, of past conversations that I've been in. Also, if you have had it enabled by your administrator, there's this dial pad. This essentially will take your Skype for Business client and turn it into your phone. In fact, this is the only phone that I've had and use. I haven't had a physical desk phone for probably five years now. This functionality allows you to make outbound calls, so not just to other Skype for business users, but maybe a customer or somebody outside of your organization. You can dial those numbers here. You could even call out to your favorite restaurant and make reservations for tonight if you wanted to. On the final tab of our tour is the, this calendar or meetings tab. It's a really nice shortcut to use this tab um, instead of flipping between Skype for Business and Outlook. From right here at a single glance, I can see what I have coming up today. And I know which of these meetings are Skype for Business meetings because those show up in blue. Those non Skype for Business meetings will show up in gray for me. And if I wanted to, I could even join my Skype for Business meeting from right here just by double clicking on the meeting. So again, at a glance, I've got my whole day at my fingertips without even opening Outlook. So I can see it all right here. Before I dive into a demo of the main client, there's one last important area I want to call out, and that's the options, which you can get to by clicking on this gear wheel. Down the left hand side here are all of the options for your Skype for Business client. So as new users, I'd encourage and recommend that you start here as one of your first activities. This section really gives you an opportunity to personalize how you have Skype for Business set up. I'm not going to step through all of these options in today's session, but there are two ones that I, I want to call out um, to help get you started um, and before you have a live call with anybody. The first one is this audio devices tab, and this is where you can indicate which device you're going to use and you can check the mic and headset volume. The next one is the video devices, again, where you can select which camera you're going to use and it'll even give you a little preview so you can see what the other person will see as well. So if setting options was one of the first activities, the second activity I'd encourage you to undertake is getting started with a conversation using instant messages or IMs. Let's take a look at how this works. Today, I want to reach out to Mike on my team. So I'm going to look in my contacts and find Mike, who in this case happens to be a favorite of mine. So he shows up right here on my list. I can see he's green. So I know now is probably an okay time to reach out. When I hover over Mike's name, Skype for Business presents me with several different kinds of ways that I can contact Mike. So I could call him, I could start a video call, I could send him an email, but today I just wanna start an I am. So let me click that I am icon. And even though his presence says he's available as a little Skype for Business etiquette tip, I always just like to make sure if it's an okay time for him to I am. For all I know, he maybe has somebody in his office talking to him, or maybe he's just getting ready to leave for a meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and type this up. Are you free? Send this off to Mike. See if it's a good time. Great. Looks like it is. So I'm going to continue to have this conversation with him. Now, I want to call out that even though right now, this is just an IM conversation, at the bottom of this window, there are a couple of those icons, which you should probably recognize. So I could choose to, if I wanted to, expand the scope of this conversation. I could start a video call where he could see me, which I always find makes conversations a little more personal. Or I could start an audio call, just simply by clicking one of these icons down below. If I did want to have an audio-only conversation with Mike, by clicking that phone icon, I can have my computer call his computer and the audio would be added to this conversation. No phone number is required, super easy. I could also share content with Mike from this icon. Say if I wanted to share my desktop or a program with him, I'll go into this a little bit more in detail in a bit. So from a single I am with Mike, I can really easily expand the ways of communicating with him in just a few clicks. 
I can also use my emoticons from here too. You saw Mike use the smiley face a little earlier, but there are many to choose from. I think one of my favorites is probably this dancing disco guy. These are things that you can add to your IMs to really add some personality or liven up the conversation. Another activity I like to do from the IM is to share files. So let's say I need to get this Excel spreadsheet over to Mike. I could do that by just simply dragging and dropping it here into the IM area, and that will automatically transfer the file over to him so he can save it locally. So I'll say, here is the latest version of the project. Check plan. So as you can see, all you do is drag and drop. We can both see the file name, the file type, and if Mike decides he wants the file, Skype for Business will also let me know that it's been sent. So now I don't need to worry about my file being lost in Mike's inbox. I know he's received it. The last thing I'll point out related to instant conversations is the ability to add other folks to this chat essentially making this a group chat. All I do is click this person with the plus icon to invite people to the conversation. So now my one-on-one -on -one conversations become group conversations very easily by inviting more people. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'll add Amy to our conversation. Hi Amy, just thought you'd like to join this conversation as we're talking about the project. Great. So. Adding files, using emoticons, starting an audio or a video call, or even adding more folks to the discussion. These are all really great activities to make my conversations even richer and things that you can do as you start off on your journey with Skype for Business. The next activity I want to take you through today is the ability to schedule more formal meetings. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. You can schedule directly from Within the client, by hovering over a user, I can either schedule a meeting, you can see from this menu here, in this case with Mike, um, or I could even schedule with an entire group of users if I wanted to do that. It's super quick and easy. Another way you can schedule meetings is, going back to my earlier comment about tight integration with Outlook, you can use that familiar Outlook environment to schedule meetings. Let's take a look at that. So here's my day today, and I know I want to set a meeting up for a little later in the afternoon. So I find an open slot, and I click this button up here on the menu bar, New Skype Meeting. If you're a current Outlook user, you'll notice that, that this looks a lot like your regular Outlook invite. But you've probably noticed two things happen when I click that New Skype Meeting button. One is that the system automatically fills in the location with Skype meeting. So everybody joining my call knows we're using Skype for Business for that meeting. The other thing you'll notice right away is that the system auto-populated the body of my invitation with my Skype for Business meeting coordinates. The rest of this invite should be pretty familiar. All the regular Outlook functionality that you're used to is still here. So if you like recurring meetings, that's still available. If you want to do some other settings, that's also available too. So now let's tell Outlook who we want to add. Hi, and Amy. And what the subject is, I already have my date and time selected, so that's good. I could even add an agenda here right above where the meeting coordinates are. So now everybody knows what we're going to discuss in the meeting. Before we send this off, another thing I'd recommend you take a peek at when you're scheduling your meetings are the meeting options. This lets you make some choices about how your meetings are set up. So, for instance, you could tell Skype for Business if you want to use a lobby or who will be presenting during your meeting. So let's go ahead and click Send. And just like any other Outlook invite, this is going to put the meeting on my calendar and anybody else uh, that I sent it to and who's accepted it. So we've sent this invitation off and it's scheduled for a little later in my day, but even so, 
I can come into my meeting at any time and get things set up. I can come in as early and as often as I like. And this is actually a great segue into the next activity I wanted to share with you today, and that's joining your meetings. Again, Skype for Business gives you several different options to join. You can either join directly from your Outlook invitation, or as an alternative, you could go back into the client, open up that Meetings tab I showed you a little earlier, and you can join from right here with a double click. This is super convenient if you don't have Outlook open, or maybe you're joining from a mobile device. So here we are in my Skype for Business meeting. Let's take a look around and, and get our bearings. I'm going to start by looking at the roster of folks who are in my meeting. To do that, I click on this participant icon here. Having this roster open during a meeting is super useful, I find. Not only can I see who's in my meeting, but you'll see these icons to the right of the name. They let me know that the individuals can hear, or I can also see if they're typing an I am. If the icon is gray, I know the feature is not enabled. If it's blue, I know it's available or being used. If we take a look down along the bottom of our screen, you'll see those same icons we saw earlier in my IM. And they have the same functionality. So if I wanted to start my video, I could do that here. If I wanted to, say, mute or unmute my mic, I could do that here. And if I wanted to add content, I'd click here. While we're on this content icon, I'll say that it's a best practice, even for my own meetings, I like to add content before folks join, so I'm all set and ready to go before meeting starts. Let's say I wanted to present a PowerPoint. I can do that right from this Present PowerPoint menu option. I choose the file, and now I can start presenting. The activity I probably do the most in my meetings is share my desktop, and I do that from right here on the Present Desktop option. There are a couple of other cool things you can do in terms of content as well. If I go to this More menu, you can see um, I can add a whiteboard for brainstorming. Here we can annotate directly on the whiteboard using the tools you see on the right-hand side here. You can draw, you can type. And if you're a presenter using the PowerPoint file that you uploaded a little earlier, you can also find these same annotation tools to the right of the screen as well. Another really cool thing with the Skype for Business meetings is that because of the tight integration with Office, I can add a OneNote right from here. From the content menu, I can click My Notes, and not only does it launch OneNote, but it'll capture my meeting date, time, the attendees, resources shared, and of course, any notes I may have taken. This makes getting my meeting notes after the fact so much quicker. You'll notice that down here on the lower right-hand corner, my picture is showing up. And it's there because the view I had set today is the presenter view. But if I wanted to hide my picture, change my view, I can easily do that by going up to the top right corner here and clicking on this icon to change my view. I can set this for myself. And then when others join my meetings, they can also set their own preferred views independently as well. Okay, now Mike has joined that my meeting. I know that because the count of participants has changed from one to two, but I also can see that his name has been added to the roster here. Now, now that I have others in the meeting with me, I have the ability to manage my attendees. There are a couple of things I wanna show you as handy little tips here today. By right-clicking on my attendees name here in the roster, I'm given some menu options. So let's say there was some background noise coming through on Mike's line. I could choose to mute his line right from here. Or if I wanted to demote him from presenter to attendee, I could do that here. Or if he was being particularly disruptive, I could even kick him out of my meeting if I wanted to. Let's say instead of managing an individual, I want to manage 
all my attendees at once. There are a couple of things I can do to affect everyone. From this participant actions button down here on the bottom, I can mute all if I need to, or gain control maybe, or maybe I want to turn off everybody's IM so everyone's attention is focused on me. I can do all of these things from right here. So let's recap the progression we covered here today. I showed you how to navigate the main client and, and set your options. And then we talked about how to start an ad hoc or instant message conversation. From there, we moved into actually scheduling and joining a meeting. And then finally, we reviewed some basic tasks for presenting in a meeting. So I hope from today's demo, you can see how Skype for Business really can accommodate all of your meeting types, whether they're quick IMs between you and a colleague, or maybe a more formal scheduled meeting sometime in the future, perhaps you're presenting to a customer. Either way, Skype for Business can adjust to your needs. Something you may be asking yourself is, if people who are external to my organization can join Skype for Business meetings, and the answer is yes. Anyone with your meeting credentials and a computer with an internet connection can join. When they click the Join Meeting in your meeting invite, they'll get a prompt to use the Skype for Business web app, which will allow them to see your content and hear your voice. Furthermore, since folks are on the go more nowadays, Skype for Business gives you flexibility when you're joining meetings remotely. There are mobile apps which let you connect to Skype for Business and give you access to all of your contacts and meetings right from your mobile device. And we let you do that from your favorite device, whether it's an iPhone, a Windows device, or an Android. At the beginning of this session, I mentioned the call monitor as one of my call out features, but I wasn't actually able to demo that during my session today. So here's a quick visual to help you understand the beauty that is the call monitor. Essentially, if you're in a Skype for Business meeting and you navigate off that meeting to another application, this call monitor will pop up and give you quick access to get back into your meeting or unmute or mute your line if you're called on in a meeting. I love this feature and I use it all the time to help me keep track of my calls. Okay, so what next? If you have Skype for Business right now, I really encourage you to start using the product. Log in to Skype for Business and check out your options. Start to personalize it and make your own. Maybe add a picture. Start a, an IM with one of your colleagues and use one of the fun emoticons to add levity to the conversation. Another thing I would encourage you to do is schedule your next meeting with Skype for Business and use some of those, you know, the functionality that I shared today, like sharing your desktop or a PowerPoint. Finally, I want to leave you today with some great resources. For new users, we have several quick start guides available for you to download. You can access those here. We also have several other resources like short videos and tutorials, all online and available to help you build confidence in using Skype for Business. In closing today, I want to thank you for spending this time with me. I know we're all busy, so I'm so glad you could join in. Before I sign off, I do have a couple of final things I want to share. We have a survey for this session and would just love to hear your feedback related to the content. It's really the best way for us to improve and help to grow our course catalog. And speaking of course catalogs, our catalog of courses is growing. So check our registration page regularly for newly added classes and join us for a future session. Thanks again for your time today. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day.